that means. That could be true if we had 400 people or just five, right? It's just us. <coughs> Turn to Titus, if you would. As you're turning there, you know I overheard Brother Tommy and Miss Brenda talking this morning. He said to her, I don't see how you could be so pretty and so dumb at the same time. I didn't say that. And then she turned right around and said, well, God made me pretty so you'd love me. But he made me dumb so I'd love you. <laughs> so I walked away as quickly as I could so that I didn't hear anything else after that. Miss <laughs> Jones had been giving her second grade students a lesson on science. She had explained about magnets and showed how they had pick up nails and other bits of iron. Now it was question time and she asked, My name begins with the letter M and I pick up things. What am I? A little boy on the front row said, You're a mother. <laughs> right? A tough old cowboy once counseled his grandson that if he wanted to live a long life, the secret was to sprinkle a little gunpowder on his oatmeal every morning. Well, he did. The grandson did this religiously and lived to the age of 93. When he died, he left 14 grandchildren, 28 grandchildren, 35 great-grandchildren, and a 15-foot hole in the wall of the crematorium. <laughs> I guess at that point, who cares? Right? Right. Are you in Titus? Yes. Titus chapter 2. Titus is a really powerful book in a lot of ways. Um, we're talking about the Christian life. We're going to read uh, verses 11 in chapter 2 through verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, these things speak and exhort. That means spiritually encourage. Mm -hmm. And rebuke. That means set people straight. Mm -hmm. With all authority, let no man despise thee. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for loving us. And Lord, I thank you for your word. We need it. There's no other way that we'll know who you are, what you're like, and what you expect right. and how to love you the way you love us. Lord, I pray that you would help us to learn what we need from your word tonight and help me to relate your message to your people. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. There's many Christians in our day who are, are attempting to eliminate any type of list of do's and don'ts. Have you heard about that? I certainly have, but that's not God's plan. We're going to try to nail down the truth about this subject here tonight. There is not a list of do's and don'ts when it comes to salvation other than you must trust Jesus as your Savior. Amen. If you don't, <laughs> you're not going to have salvation. Right. You're not going to go to heaven when you die. That's a must. That's an absolute. That's one of those things that you must do. Mm. You must trust Jesus. However, there's nothing else other than that. We don't have to, like Brother Tommy mentioned this morning, uh, complete a certain list of things, travel to this place, uh, across over to the East Country and kiss a stone or something like that. There's nothing like that that we must do to... Uh, earn our salvation because we can't be good enough, can't do enough to earn it. Right. However, after we get saved, mm. 
There are some things that God expects us to do, and then there's some things He expects us to quit doing. Right. He loves us enough to accept us the way we are, but loves us also enough to not leave us that way. Mm. <clears throat> In verse 11, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. This is important because this idea that some people have been rejected by God, according to the Calvinist people, right. this isn't true. Mm. No one's been rejected by God. Salvation has been given to all men, whosoever mm. may come. Right. God so loved the world, not just a portion of it. Mm. So that's just not true. Grace, as it is said here in this verse, is given to, the salvation is given to us not because of our own merit, but because He loved us yeah. first, before we were ever looking for Him. In verse 12, the Bible says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. When it says teaching us, what's teaching us? And according to verse 11, it's our salvation, our redemption, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When we get saved, the Bible teaches that we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves in and begins directing us, showing us hey, this isn't good. Mm -hmm. This isn't right. You know that bad feeling that you get when you sin? Mm -hmm. That's the Holy Spirit saying, no, no. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get this urge to do something kind for someone. We get this urge to forgive people. You know, that's not natural. Mm. Sometimes we get the urge to talk to someone about our faith, about Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit Amen. dealing with us to do some things that we ought to be doing. So He gives us direction in things that we aren't supposed to be doing and gives us direction in things that we are supposed to be doing. So we see here that this change that is supposed to take place causes some things to be omitted from our life and then some things to be newly Incorporated in our life. This is the do's and don'ts that some people are trying to hide or eliminate. Right. He says here to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Now I want to get your input here. You got your thinking cap on? Somebody raise your hand and tell me something that jumps into your mind when you hear the word ungodliness that we're supposed to deny or omit from our life. Court? Alcohol? Working on that one? Good man, good man. <laughs> Just joking. Ma'am? Bad language? Bad language? Yep, and by the way, that's not just cuss words. No. Lying. 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 Stretching the truth. Telling the story a little differently than what it really was so that it sounds a little bit better. Mm. Brother Phil? Deceit. Deceit. And that's not the thing you're sitting on either. That is being untruthful. Gossip. Anything else? Selfishness. Selfishness. That's a good one. That's a good one. That one infects this person big time a lot. Mm -hmm. That was not a good time to say right, Miss Linda. Pride. She said pride. Oh, pride. I thought you said right. <laughs> 
You're right, and pride. That one also infects me. <laughs> Any, anybody else? So he says here to deny ungodliness. And then he said worldly lust. So I want your help here as well. These are different or else they would not have been differently stated here. So when you think, when, the, when, when you hear the word, uh, or two words, worldly lust, what jumps to your mind? Money. Money. Prestige. A praise, certain of prestige. Men. praise of men. Praise of men. That's why we toot our horn sometimes, right? Covetousness. Covetousness. Covetousness, which is idolatry. You know, I was, I was uh, last Sunday morning, I think it was, in Sunday school, we were talking about idolatry, wasn't, weren't we? Yeah. And I was... You know, when you think of when you hear the word idolatry, I'm chasing a rabbit right here. You hear the word idolatry, most of us sit back comfortably thinking, oh, I don't have a problem with idolatry. I don't have any Buddhas in my house. Because when you read the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, that's what idolatry was. You had some figure that someone made so that you could go bow down to it at certain times of the day. And we don't do that. But it's clear in Scripture, especially in the New Testament, that idolatry is covetousness. And that's when we want something that we shouldn't be wanting. Wanting something that is not ours and ought not to be ours. <clears throat> What other things would you consider to be in this category of worldly lust? Now, and I'm asking this question because there is a list of do's and don'ts. You cannot read Scripture and, and deny that. It's there. It's everywhere. We're not going to try to make the full list. We don't have time for that. It's a long one. I think the reason that some people try to get away from this list is because there are some people who try to impose that list on other people. In other words, I'm going to come over to you and say, you're not doing that right. By the way, the Bible says you shouldn't be doing that. There's a time for that. But a lot of people abuse that. Right. And that's where you hear the term, don't, don't be preaching at me or uh, don't shove that down my throat. Mm. The list is for me to read and to abide by so that I might please Him who hath chosen me to be a soldier. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So, we've named a few of them. Drinking. How about listening to worldly music? Yeah. Sounds good. Pumps you up. But does it glorify God? Mm -hmm. The Bible gives us much Scripture and much clear direction on what kind of music that we ought to be listening to. Music that prepares our heart to glorify Him. If you look in the next chapter, in Titus chapter 3 and verse 2, He said to speak evil of no man. Miss Linda mentioned this one already. Uh, talking bad about other people. Mm. Now, we probably wouldn't open up a can of, of beer and drink it, but we'll talk about somebody behind their back at the drop of a hat, and sometimes we will drop the hat. And here it is clear that we're not supposed to be talking evil of any man. <clears throat> Gossip, I believe. If you look in Proverbs, I believe it's chapter 7 where, um, or 6, where God says, you know, there's, 
There's six things that I hate, but now there's a seventh one that I just utterly despise. Mm. It's an abomination. And it's sowing discord. Isn't it? Sowing discord. discord that's, that's talking bad about somebody behind their back. Gossip is a bad sin. Mm. Worse than drinking alcohol. According to God, according to His Word. <clears throat> so gossip is definitely on the no no list. Yeah. What about the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. That's a list, isn't it? Yeah. A don't do type of a list. And even a do, there's some things in there we're supposed to be doing. <clears throat> he also says here in this verse, verse 2, to be no brawlers but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Brawlers means contentious or hard to get along with, looking for an argument, mm. argumentative. <clears throat> verse 8 says this, be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto all men. What's he saying here? He's saying that we are supposed to be careful. In other words, on purpose, deliberately choosing to do some things that God has said to do. <clears throat> And we're supposed to encourage other people to do the same thing. If you look in Hebrews chapter 10, I believe verse 24, the Bible says we're supposed to exhort the brethren to love and to good works. That means spiritually encourage each other to get up and go do something that's good. Mm. To love people. We're supposed to encourage each other to do that. Yeah. You know, we could go on for hours and hours, and we're not, <laughs> about this list. And I'm not trying to make it where that it's bigger than we can bite off and chew here. It's not like that. The truth is, God's still working on me. And when I think back, I look back into my life uh, 30 years ago, praise God, I've I've been delivered from some things that was a real problem to me and, and, and for me back then. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I thank the Lord for that. I've been a work in progress and I'm not there yet. Mm. And that's okay. But I need to be working on that. Amen. God's still trying, through the Holy Spirit, still trying to work on me and He's doing the same for you. Yeah. What we don't need to be doing is try to make you to be at the same level that I feel that I'm at. You shouldn't be trying to make that person at the same level that you're at. They're not, they're not going to be. We're all at different growth uh, phases yeah. in our life. When we try to impose these things on other people, that's when we become wrong mm -hmm. and in that um, pharisaical mindset which has given Christianity a black eye. Yeah. Verse 12 says this in chapter, uh, in chapter 2, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, I like this word sober because it means a whole lot more than not drunk. It does mean not drunk, but it means more than that. It means quiet or sedate in manner. It also means <clears throat> marked by seriousness or solemnity, free from excess, extravagance, or exaggeration, showing self-control. That's a lot. If, 
if all I had to do was this coming week work on trying to be sober, again, that means more than not drunk. I don't have a problem there, but I do have a problem in some of those other areas. If all I had to do, I'd have my hands full just trying to fit this description of what sober means. We have a lot to do, for sure. This isn't saying when it says uh, seriousness, marked by seriousness or solemnity, this is not saying that you can't laugh and enjoy humor. Solomon said that a merry heart is good medicine. Amen. Um, I don't remember where I heard it the other day, but I heard that if you laugh, didn't you, Jeanette, you told me this? You don't, okay, I don't remember who told me this. But when you laugh, it boosts your immune system. Hmm. When, you, when you spend, I think it was like just five seconds of anger, decreases your immune system for up to four hours. Hmm. Solomon knew what he was talking about. Of course, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God doesn't expect us to be straight-faced all the time. God has a sense of humor. And I know that because I look in the mirror every morning. And sometimes laugh. Sometimes cry. So he's not saying that we cannot laugh and have a good time. What he is saying here is to get serious and prudent about what we're doing or not doing. Don't get wrapped up in the things of this world. They're temporary. Get wrapped up in pleasing God in all that you do, but especially in your heartfelt relationship with Him. A list, we're talking about this do and don't list, a list without a longing to please God makes us a legalist. How many of you heard that term legalist? Yeah. I've been a legalist before. Because I had this list that I felt like you had to look like this, dress this way, walk this way, do these certain things, don't go to these places, and if you don't follow this list, you cannot be used of God. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. No. It's not true. People that don't look like me or dress like me can still serve God and I've seen it. Yeah. What made me have that attitude was pride. Mm. And this warped perception that I was right in everything. That's not true either. I have issues. I have problems. I fight temptations and sometimes I lose that fight. And praise God, He still uses me. Mm -hmm. So He can use other people too. Yeah. So therefore, a list without a longing to please God in heartfelt worship makes us a legalist. There is a list. We should follow it. We should strive on purpose to follow it any time that we're reading the Bible. And by the way, when we read the Bible, the Holy Spirit's going to point something out to us that we're not doing right. Right. That's, that's why we should read the Bible. In fact, that's one reason why people don't read yeah. the Bible. Amen. Because it's uncomfortable. Have you ever been reading Scripture and all of a sudden you, you read something and you quickly quit reading it and went to something different? I have. It's convicting. But it's supposed to be. Amen. And, and, and the reason it's convicting is because there's something here that needs to change. Right. That's where we get that list. Mm. It's here. We're supposed to abide by it. Let's pray. Father, I love You and I thank You for giving us Your Word. Lord, again, we, we need that. We need Your Holy Spirit in our life to guide us.
And I thank You so much for doing so. Lord, I pray that You would help me to listen better, to obey more, and to do a better job of trying to please You in the things that I do. Lord, I pray that You'd help me to be more like Jesus. And I pray this in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Turn to page 481. 481.